How's it going everybody? This is a hairy frogfish and it's eating a shrimp. So this is not something you see every day. And that's a big shrimp for this hairy frogfish. And you can see it ate a little bit of sand with the shrimp and it's it's throwing up big some of that sand. I mean really happened to all of us once in a while that we overeat and then some of it comes back out. So this is a very unusual fish. It's camouflaged as a chunk of algae, hence the hair. And it's also walking instead of swimming mainly. So we'll get back to that later. So this fish here, we observed at night on a night dive, obviously, in Negros Island in the Philippines. Check that out. You can still see the antennae of the shrimp sticking out from the mouth of that fish. So what a spectacle. Let's look at it again in slow motion. And I filmed this at 60 frames per second, but it took less than a frame to eat that shrimp. Same dive, same frogfish, same night. So the frogfish is still hungry and there's a crab. So is it going to eat the crab too? No, the crab decides to fight back. It's not going to be the dinner of the frogfish, the second course. So obviously there's a lot at stake for that crab and it decides to fight and then it decides to move just a few steps to the left and avoid being captured. So the frogfish wasn't particularly phased and I guess it's still <laughs> digesting the shrimp and you can still see the antenna of the shrimp sticking out of the mouth and it's still kind of regurgitating that shrimp. Crazy. Okay, here our friend the hairy frogfish swims along. That's my dive buddy Matt in the background. They actually rather rarely swim. So this is really one of the other interesting things about these frogfishes that they prefer to use their pectoral and pelvic fins to walk. So here you can see a close-up of the mouth. You know, what a character, what a character this fish is. And again, you know, this hair is not to keep it warm like a mammal, but to camouflage as algae. So we have more footage here of the frogfish walking. So it's using its pectoral fins and pelvic fins to push itself over the sand. This is probably a much more energy efficient way of moving forward as co compared to swimming. And on top of that, it's more in within its role as a ball of algae. You can also see the lure on top of the eyes very nicely. So this is a modified part of the dorsal fin. So this is mimicking a little worm to attract prey items. Now you can also see there's a storm here. So this is a storm of tiny shrimp and fish. So this, you know, it was full moon during that dive and there was just so much plankton in the water at night and the plankton was attracted to a dive and to a video light. So the frogfish was clearly affected by us, but not necessarily badly. I think uh, you know, that shrimp it ate in the beginning, we might have actually attracted with our video lights. So, you know, as careful as you go about doing your dive, you will always affect the animals around you just by your presence. So we followed that frogfish for a while you can see the more crabs in its way. That's a, a, a crab mold on the left. So nothing left to eat there. But I think that frogfish got its fill that night. And again, you can see the, the odd gait of that fish. And it's, it's kind of a hybrid. So it's also using its tail fin, its causal fin to propel itself forward. So it's both a gallop as well as movement of the tail fin. Here again, you can see that crazy storm of little fish and shrimp, and you can see the beautiful hair of that fish again. So very excited to get footage of this animal. This is really one of these muck diving uh, charismatic critters, which people come to the Philippines for to see during their dives. There's more interesting footage from the same night dive. So this is another animal which is camouflaged as a ball of algae. And obviously it's not a frogfish, it's a crab. And the hair, 
are actual algae. So these are not parts of the crab body, like in the case of the frogfish, but you know, these are algae growing on that crab. So, you know, very well blending in with the other actual balls of algae. And you don't see this animal if you're not specifically looking for something like this. So genius camouflage, we saw this in only about two meters of water at the very end of the dive. Now, when you night dive in the Philippines, you see such a high biodiversity of crabs. So this small crab is sitting next to an anemone. And you know, what's the relationship between the anemone and the crab? Well, I'm not sure. So for sure, the anemone protects the crab with its stinging cells. By the way, here comes a fish, a juvenile sweet lip, and it gets hit by the anemone. And But, you know, does the crab do anything for the anemone? Does it protect it or does it even feed on it occasionally? So is this a mutualist relationship or a prey predator or is the crab essentially a parasite? We don't know. So for anybody who knows how to observe and who maybe has a macro lens, there are so many open, interesting questions in the ocean, in the tropics. So now we saw this large sea slug which is a pleuroprank brank, uh, related to the neuterobranchs pleuropanchia foscali i believe and you know these are fairly common now we also saw uh, pleuroprankia which uh, is a really rare species so i found very little information in the scholarly literature and uh, you know online pictures i only found a few other pictures from the philippines and papua new guinea so this animal is so well camouflaged again and if you take a photograph where things obviously don't move you you really have difficulties visually parsing what's the animal and you know whether this isn't just really a chunk of algae growing in the sand but when you film them they're moving actually rather swiftly for being slugs so uh, then uh, you can see that these are actually animals so here there are two of them meeting and the, you know we saw about four of them on only about a square meter of sand so really with all of these videos this is my message the supposedly barren sand is not dead you know this is a very rich ecosystem with lots of animals which are very specifically adapted to this ecosystem so i think this is really underappreciated by a lot of people and that, you know there's really no need to put artificial reefs in these sands to you know to supposedly fix them so again you know you can see these flaps on the back of this pleuroprank and you know how it's blending in with the little algae next to it so and this is at night so you know any kind of predator would have a very hard time figuring out that this is actually a mollusk and you know it might be worth eating we also saw a wasp fish relative of the scorpion fishes quite venomous don't touch this one this is in between the seagrass again in, in really in the shallows and i would like to conclude this video by showing you another frogfish and you know very different skin very different coloration like the one we saw at first so this is more camouflaged like a black pebble but you know same strategy uh, going for small prey animals which don't realize that this is actually a predatory fish now if you have made it that far in the video you probably enjoy my raving about marine animals so uh, then please check out the new book i wrote with my friend and colleague dr james reimer it's called 25 future dives it's about environmental problems in the ocean explained dive briefings should be a fun read and see you soon